Dying Light is packed with secrets, unique weapons, and just silly easter eggs you probably didn't know about. While players are still working to uncover all of Dying Light 2's secrets, let's go back to Haran and try to find some of the best ones. This first one makes me wonder if Dying Light was actually developed in India, not Poland. See for yourself. As soon as you get into the slums, head to the train depot. There you will meet a survivor who claims to be a werewolf. The Lickenthrope. Just ignore him. Enter the hangar and switch on this power box. You'll hear music and all of a sudden there will be a dancing crowd from an Indian movie. Not sure what it's about, but I suppose Bollywood's golden rule applies. In any confusing situation, just start dancing. Just don't stick around for too long. Sooner or later, the dancers will remember they're actually zombies and attack you. Too bad dancing is not a great weapon to fight zombies. To survive, you'll need something heavier and sharper, like a sword. Even better if it's magical and legendary, like Excalibur, or rather EXP Caliber. King Arthur's sword in Dying Light can be found in the southeast. It's stuck in a dead zombie near the shoreline, but you can't just grab it. First, you need to prove you're worthy. You need to swim to the small rocky island and hold the action button for about three minutes. A few moments later. After you take the sword, the body will burn. After it burns away, you can also find a blueprint. It'll come in handy since EXP Caliber does a lot of damage, but also wears out fast. Not impressed by the legendary sword? Okay, okay, there are other options. Find this apartment building. It's near the entrance to the quarantine zone of the underground parking lot. Go to the roof and there you will find a blue toolbox. It's hidden behind barrels and boxes. Get there and kick the toolbox no less than 70 times. Yes, it sounds ridiculous, even the protagonist agrees. Shit, okay. But all your effort will be rewarded and inside you'll find a blueprint for Korek Machete, named after one of the producers. It's a very powerful weapon for the early stages of the game. You can also find an improved Korek Machete 2.0 in the old town, but that won't be easy. There are four gasoline canisters placed around the town. You'll find them next to the writing, Korek was here. You need to bring these canisters to the rooftop simultaneously. You can't bring one and then go for the others. The canister will go back to its original spot. Also consider that you can only carry one canister at a time. And no, you cannot run, climb, or attack while carrying it. On something simpler. Let's see. Not far from the dam, in the countryside, you can find two holes in the ground. Just hit the ground until you find a pile of DVDs with the movie Charlie. It's a reference to the mass burial of unsold Atari games in New Mexico. Next to the DVDs, you'll find a blueprint for extraterrestrial chicken on a stick. Yes, it's a melee weapon that looks like a chicken on a stick. E.T. really phoned this reference home. Why extraterrestrial? You'll find strange stones scattered all over the location. Find 15 of them and then head south and find a solitary house. Get into the attic and wait for the night. Place the stones on the glyph. By doing that, you'll summon weird aliens. Don't be surprised when instead of little green men, you'll see chickens on sticks. They'll conduct their experiments and leave you in a field. I don't even want to think about what those chickens might have been probing with. But that's not all there is to alien encounters. Go east, near the shore underwater, you'll see a crashed UFO. Inside, you'll find a blueprint of a weapon with a really odd name. And not just the name. The weapon itself is weird. When you hit an enemy, it puts a jetpack on their back, which immediately explodes. Don't waste ammo though, it also needs to be crafted. Grenades are a good addition to the game. Once you finish the quest, do you believe, you'll unlock a new safe zone in Nishak's house in Old Town. Inside, you'll find a skull. 
you'll need to find rocks in different parts of town and place them in the eyes of the skull. Don't worry, this time there are just two of them, not 15. Once you do this, they will burn and you'll see a blueprint for Right Hand of Glover. This is a traditional reference to Electrobolt Plasmid from Bioshock. Previously, Techland added this easter egg to Dead Island. They love giving strange weapons for finding easter eggs. Did you know that the game had a grenade that causes the zombies to have explosive diarrhea, which makes them fly around? You'll get that blueprint if you play checkers with a ghost. The checkers board is on the roof of the tower. Make a move, exit the building, and then go back in. You'll see the game continue. Make the moves until you win the game. Once you do, next time you enter, you'll find Sick Bomb Blueprint on the board. That should be enough weapons for you. Now it's time to take a look at the movie and game references. Dying Light had plenty of those. In the slums, there's an interesting cave. When you enter it, you get the message, your destiny is to build your legend. After it, you'll have to kill off several waves of zombies. Once you finish it, you'll get another message. Enough! Patch 1.0.2 activated. Better do some quests. It's a reference to the old famous loot cave from Destiny. Because of a bug, enemies would constantly spawn there and the players use this loophole to grind it for loot. In Old Town, there's an odd green pipe that can be found inside a chimney. Get inside and you'll find yourself in Super Mario World 1-1. But be careful. The local Goombas can bite, and at the end of the level there's a sneaky bomber. No, you don't have to jump on them, just make sure to avoid the punches and don't fall into the blood. But don't try to finish the level too fast. Somewhere behind the pipes there's a pink cube, on top of which is the blueprint for the Paisa suit. This thing will let you glide like a flying squirrel. What's with the name you ask? Paisa is the nickname of Dying Light's game director. During the game's development, he found a bug that allowed you to glide during a jump. The team liked the glitch and decided to leave it as an easter egg. Not far from the antenna station, there are mountains where you can find an orange flower. Try to pick it up. The protagonist will teleport into the world of plants vs zombies. Unfortunately, there's no blueprint for a secret weapon here, but you can pick up all the plants after dealing with the binders. You might already know that one of the children in the tower has a toy version of Link's Master Sword from Legend of Zelda. It appears after you give Kate the crayons. But did you know that the game also has a normal version of the sword? To get it, you need to complete some quests for Fatin and Tolga. After they leave on the train, they will leave behind a hacking device. It will allow you to open mysterious boxes scattered all over the countryside. The blueprint for Link's Master Sword can be found in one of the boxes. Good stuff. The weapon also glows every time mutants are nearby. This has to be a reference to Sting from Lord of the Rings. A reference within a reference. Use the device to open another container and find a blueprint for Tolga's Folly. It allows you to craft the button, which teleports you to a random location. Press the button until you end up in a strange film studio, or rather a torture chamber. Among the dead bodies, you'll find some wearing Techland t-shirts. It seems like these guys wanted to make a horror movie. That's just how much they love cinema. Speaking of horrors, the game has a side quest, Where's My Mother? As you look for a missing woman, you'll learn that a maniac is keeping her in his basement. Inside, there's also a basket with body lotion. Did you recognize the Silence of the Lambs reference? On the shore of the slums, there's a rundown Bites Motel. It's a reference to the TV series Bates Motel, based on the legendary movie Psycho. Be careful if you go sightseeing. There's no crazy killer here, but there's a lot of zombies. When you do the dungeon quest in Old Town, take a look at the statues and the flickering light. Did you get the reference? It's the weeping angels from Doctor Who, the sculptures that moved when the light didn't shine on them. Okay, enough of the creepy jokes. For those who love cartoons, there's also some fun stuff. For instance, Teddy Bear, whose character reminds of Lotso from Toy Story. When you do the Rupert the Gunsmith quest, look into the daycare area. Inside you'll find a teddy bear. Remember the toolbox you had to kick 70 times? Same thing here. Press the teddy bear until it gets mad and explodes. In its place, you'll find a blueprint for Stasis Field Projector. Any Harry Potter fans? There's something for you too. Turns out the Dursley family actually lived in Turkey. In the countryside, there's a house with a room under the stairs. Inside, you can find some items associated with the young wizard, a broom, glasses, and a sorting hat. 
There's also a small skull on the top shelf. If you spin it, the door and windows will close, and you'll be attacked by two ghosts. Once you kill them, look around the house. In one of the rooms, you'll find a dead woman in the bathtub. It's a mirror's reference, right? Final question. What kind of references are the most common in Dying Light? No, it's not The Walking Dead. It's hard to tell how many walls and cars in the game have numbers of Star Trek spaceships on them. Also, in the slums, there's a grave with the words Guy in Red Shirt. In the original 60s Star Trek, the characters wearing a red shirt would usually die by the end of the episode. And these are just some of the Dying Light Easter eggs. If we missed your favorite Easter egg, let us know in the comments. Meanwhile, we're off to explore Dying Light 2 to tell you about even more interesting facts. This has been Hello Arcade. Hit like and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.